In our gospel, one of Jesus' disciples saw him praying, which as we read the gospels, Jesus does quite a bit. And the disciple says, teach us to pray. The disciple, the other disciples, see the connection that Jesus has to the Father, and he asks Jesus to give that connection to his disciples. Help us to be with God the way that you are. Now, prayer simply is petition or supplication. On the surface of it can just look like trying to get stuff from God. But I want us to think a bit more deeply about prayer this morning. For prayer is, among other things, is a soul being before God in a certain way, in a certain manner or posture, a certain attitude. In prayer, we are recognizing that we are in need, that we are lacking, we're wanting. And we come to God as the one who has what we need. It's a relation of dependence. And we ask God to give us what we need, what we cannot give for ourselves. And this posture is reflected in our reading uh, last week, from last week's Gospels, right, right, right before our reading from this week's Gospel, in the Gospel of Luke. Right before that, we have the story of Martha and Mary, of Martha who is anxious and agitated, but Mary who sat at Jesus' feet in a posture of receiving, of being dependent, of listening to and receiving from another. And so this week's gospel reading continues the theme of being, like Mary, aware of our need of our profound need and of coming to the one who provides for us, coming to the one who has what we need and of being open to receiving what we need as a gift. The opposite of this would be self-assured. Uh, to, I, I don't need anything from anybody. I'm good. I'm independent, I'm not dependent, uh, I'm a self-starter, uh, I don't need anything from anyone, none of this servile asking anything from anybody. That would make me beholden to them. I don't want to be in anyone's debt. And I don't want to receive any gifts because that means I owe somebody something. This is a different attitude, a fundamentally different attitude when it comes to prayer. You are aware that we are basically in need and that we cannot provide that need and that we need what we need we can't earn. We can't buy it. We can't be good enough so that we get it. But we can only receive it as a gift. Jesus' teaching, after he gives a model prayer, the Lord's Prayer in this version in Luke, is an image of someone in need. He gives several images of people in need, seeking something. He gives the image of a son asking his father for food. Of someone knocking on their friend's closed door at midnight, looking for help. and the kids were out of town this last uh, week or two and so it's been uh, myself and the cat and uh, those of you who have cats know that one thing that cats are really good at is letting you know they want something almost always that something is food 
And uh, so many times there's been a little one-eyed cat looking up at me wanting food. So um, when I was preparing for this sermon, thinking of a son asking his father for food, David does not often ask me for food, uh, but the cat is asking me for food all the time. David can find his own food. <laughs> the, the cat hasn't figured the refrigerator door yet out. Yet. Yet. Who knows? All right. Okay. 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 And get off on the cat. So the, it's the image of someone in need, right? Of uh, someone who needs another, another to give them uh, what they can't get for themselves. And this is how we relate to God. Not as a peer or an equal or a buddy, but we come to God as one to whom we are fundamentally dependent, upon which we are fundamentally dependent. And because we are in Christ, because we've been baptized into Christ, because of Jesus, we can address God, however, as Father. Because we are joined to the Son, we now relate to God the way that Jesus does. We relate to God as Father. And it's important to see here in the context of this passage what relating to God as Father means. Father means one who gives us what we need because he loves us. We come to God who is our Father and he is our Father. He is the one who gives to us what we need because he loves us. Not because we've earned it. Not because we're um, you know, good enough or something like that, but simply because he loves us. He cares for us and wants what is best for us. And Jesus says that ultimately what we really need, what our real need, our real desire is, is God himself. Fundamentally, the way we are built, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in God. That our desire is of such a great depth that only God can fill it. And that's why when Jesus concludes this teaching on prayer, he says God is going to give you what you really need. And what that is, is the Holy Spirit is God himself dwelling within us in kind of a surprising turn in the passage. In the Gospel of Luke and its companion work, the Acts of the Apostles, the Holy Spirit regularly comes and fills in response to prayer. This is kind of the a repeated image in uh, Luke and in Acts. In response to our recognizing our need and then opening ourselves to God the Father to receive what we need, we receive the Holy Spirit. In prayer, we receive what we need from God. And what we most need from God is God himself who comes to us in the Holy Spirit within. Paul talks about this in, the, in where he says that in Christ, we are connected to the Father. We are no longer cut off. Because in Christ, Paul writes, the full fullness of deity dwells bodily. And, Paul continues, you have come to fullness in him. Christ is our connection to God, the conduit through which we are connected to the Father. That we are connected to him, to Christ, as parts of a body connected together with Christ as the head, as the image that he grows. 
But this body grows with a growth that is from God. This body through Christ is filled with the Holy Spirit that builds us all up in relation and in unity with God the Father. As we have received Christ Jesus the Lord and the gift of the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, as we have received the greatest gift to fulfill our greatest need, let us continue to walk, as Paul writes, to live our lives in Christ, filled with the Spirit and coming before God the Father with open hearts, knowing that he loves us and gives us what we need. Amen.